Hey guys, and welcome to another brand new video. In this video, we have a little bit of an Xbox video going on where we have some very, very intriguing internal stuff where Digital Foundry, one of the probably most premier testers and internal, like, kind of schemers, came out with a really interesting report in regards to the Xbox Series X about how their internals might be a little bit not as well optimized and not as good as we might be expecting. Although, I've been trying my best not to be too much on a pure and negative side because we actually had some really cool Microsoft news when it comes to number one, brand new controllers, and also brand new, really self-sustaining basically good practices in regards to maintaining controllers too as well. So going to have a little bit of negativity in regards to the internals, which is a little bit more on the concerning side due to the fact that, well, Microsoft has been very skeptical on having a mid-generation refresh, such as like an Xbox Series X Pro or an Xbox Series S Pro or a brand new Xbox Series XZ, whatever it might be, to go compete against the PlayStation 5 Pro. But as well, we also have some good news too, because even though the internals may not necessarily be the best, don't forget they are still focusing quite a bit on the PlayStation. I I almost said PlayStation PC version of Xbox. Now, yeah, I'm Xbox is totally going and focusing on PlayStation for sure. So we're going to talk about this all throughout this video, so make sure you guys are subscribed with the notifications on Twitter and Twitch and down below. If you guys are bored, we actually will be streaming up on Twitch probably as you can see this video. And of course, leave a like, your thoughts and comments all down below. So... First and foremost, let's get kind of into like the good news first and foremost. There actually was a brand new now Xbox Special Edition controller that has now been recently announced and it looks absolutely fantastic. Now you guys have, may have even seen this too because there's a brand new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle uh, basically controller where I had pizza. I'm not joking. They basically had like little cloth dispensers inside of the controller itself and they had like little liquid drops that unironically smelt like pizza and we've also seen a lot of really cool like customizations when it comes to controllers. You can look go online and custom make controllers to yourself and it's actually a very very nice nifty thing like they've done very well on the xbox side so actually it's a brand new xbox controller design that looks pretty cool and of course it's called a storm cloud vapor special edition and it just looks absolutely cool it almost looks like a brand almost like a piece of like chocolate or candy or something like that too as well so it's a cloud uh it's put over by the clouds in storming skies and it also just looks like an all-around really really nice controller so it's gonna go pick this one up too as well it was actually announced as of today but with even bigger news as Xbox has actually now been starting to go and sell replacement parts now for the Xbox game pads. Once again, very, very nifty because it's kind of letting people have a chance to go and replace and fix and basically save money and it also makes it a lot more sustainable because you're not reusing a lot of plastic and not having to go and always, you know, just chuck out your stuff in the garbage or have to send it back into uh, Xbox itself. Like, you might just have to go and replace one X button or the actual, like, you know, D-pad, whatever it might go and be. And, well, thankfully, now with Microsoft's brand new features, they now have a chance to go make these better. So when you have your controller break, it's never the best. And now they're actually offering a big, big thing of self-repair, which I think is actually really good news. Like, we're about to go have some bad news on Xbox. I want to go and highlight some cool things going on in the Xbox ecosystem. Because they will have downloadable instructions, step-by-step -step tutorial videos, and as well, will hopefully save a lot of gamers a lot of money. But on top of that, it will also help out just, like, on the whole world itself. So, you, it is a little bit costly, though, because you have to have, like, ranges from $24 for button sets to $60 for the circuit board and motor assembly unit. Although, you can go and replace the things like vibration motors for $35, too, as well. So, it's nice because, well, uh, some controllers are more expensive. Think the Pro version. Versions, so just having more options as well is always very nice to go and see. So got to give them some thumbs up with that one. But one thing to note is that we actually had a pretty intriguing thing on the AMD Xbox chip set, which has been apparently now having some issues with the CPU being paired with GDDR6 memory. Now, this is a little bit more of like a deeper techie dive. And at the end of the day, like the console has been the same console regardless. Like if it works for you, it's fine. You shouldn't feel bad about it. Or as well, if you also just ever want to make your next big step into PC, I as a PC gamer, I welcome you with open arms because you could also basically go play all your game pass games and starfield halo whatever you want forza all on this when it comes to well pc so it's not the world's worst i'm always a big fan of pushing the pc supremacy but obviously not everyone either wants that you like to play on your couch like you like your tv whatever it is like, like i can't fault you but one big thing to note is that apparently now using the same comparison for the AMD chip sets, uh, it kind of goes and shows that they actually may not be the most optimized when it comes to the console itself. So Digital Foundry has been one of the more bigger testing units when it comes to FPS and internals and specs and everything else, which is a very phenomenal group. They tested an Xbox Series X inspired AMD 4800 desktop kit to see how it would fare against some of AMD's more so standard desktop Ryzen processors in gaming tasks, basically trying to go and put like the Xbox first PC in very comparable units. 
units because AMD didn't make both. So this kit is unique because it integrates the Xbox Series X SoC and GDDR6 memory. So despite its gaming-focused nature, the console CPU did not apparently fare well, and it was constantly outperformed by a Ryzen 5 3600, despite the additional memory bandwidth that the GDDR6 offers and the Xbox's chips to additional cores. Now, it's a little bit on the intriguing side, though, because it's more, I believe, based on more of an integrated graphics, which makes things a little bit kind of, well, Weird, weird. So AMD developed a 4,800 series desktop kit to sell off Xbox Series X SoCs that lacked a functional, functioning GPU. As a result, these kits feature no integrated graphics, leaving the CPU as the only working part of the chip. The kit comes in a micro ATX form factor featuring a standard AM4 RATH cooler and enough USB ports and PCI slots to set up an average PC. So although it is like kind of like a somewhat bigger motherboard from what I'm kind of reading and interpreting on this one, it does make things very intriguing because it is not necessarily apparently the best specs or as well not be able to be optimized as well as possible. So this makes the 4800 series an interesting candidate for testing since it can show how their AMD latest console hardware performs in a like-for-like -like comparison against current PC hardware and PC games. So once again, though, there is also other things that are meant for Xbox. Think about, like, price optimization. Uh, on top of that, too, uh, you have to fit everything in a small certain size. You have to be able to go mass produce it. So there is a few other, other caveats that don't necessarily make the Xbox thing as bad, but it's intriguing to see the actual testing done. So the chip yourself is a typical Zen 2 8-core 16-thread design, However, what makes the CPU platform different from AMD standard desktop solutions is the integration of this DDR6 memory that they keep on mentioning throughout this article for the entire memory system and less cache compared to the AMD's Zen 2 desktop CPUs. So basically, like, it's still a good card, although it is slightly dated at this point. Same with the PlayStation, not to only be like, harping on Xbox. But it did kind of go and show that it's not able to go and cache stuff. So basically, let's say you game for a very long session, you may have more of a chance for things to have issues. Or think a game like Starfield with a lot of loading stuff, there might be an issue with that when you load into games or have, try to get fast resume, and as well in comparison to the DDR6 memory is just not apparently as efficient as other PC options. Although once again, PC makes more sense, it's a little bit more fine-tuned, more like customizable, and that's why we have optimization on consoles. So I don't want to completely knock on Xbox too much throughout the article itself. So basically, Digital Foundry did not say how much cache it has, but apparently it has a similar cache capacity to AMD's 4750G, which features around 8 megabytes of L3 cache. Compared to the Xbox Series X hardware, the 4800 does actually vary slightly, and the CPU turbo clock is higher. I bring up to 4 gigahertz boost compared to 3.6 gigahertz on Microsoft's console. So it is actually slightly better, funny enough, off the console itself. The feature is full access to all eight cores, which is not the case with the series console, with one core actually reserved now for operating systems. So what, it does make sense, because if you have an Xbox console, you do need to be able to go and run the operating system. That's basically, if you have a PC, you need something to go and run Windows in the background. So once again, the same thing PlayStation does it as well. It's not the most harping thing, but it's intriguing to go and see on, like, how the optimization does kind of go and falter because it's not fully utilizing stuff because they have to allocate their resources to something else, which is, like I said, not the worst. So as well, there also is less than half of the DDR6 ICs found in the Series X, which is 4 compared to 10. But with no integrated GPU active, there is no need to have all 10 just for the CPU since all four ICs still provide 16 gigabytes of memory capacity. Sale, so we have no idea what the memory bandwidth was, was also affected due to the IC changes, but Digital Foundry does not mention it as well, so it might just be the same as the Xbox Series X, which is intriguing to kind of go look at this too as well because like some of the stats actually do vary quite a bit when it comes to like the desktop kit versus the other Ryzen Pros too as well. Once again though most PCs can be slightly more optimized and of course there is other various caveats when it comes to things like an Xbox or optimization there's like slightly older like drivers like there's a lot of small things too so I don't want to harp on Xbox too too much. So as well ironically they also tested revealed that the Xbox series chip inside the 4 8800 desktop kit is not as good as a gaming processor as one might think. The CPU failed to outperform similar CPUs in the Zen 2 architecture, including the Ryzen 5 3600 and Ryzen 7 Pro. The culprit was not the CPU itself, but the, more so the memory that the GPU is or CPU is attached to, which is a typically, you know, most people I think are on like DDR4 at this point right now, which provides substantially better memory bandwidth than the DDR4 memory, but vastly inferior latency results. So it technically has better memory bandwidth, but it's not as efficient. Maybe think like a big hard drive versus like an SSD. Like the SSD will be more, maybe more less efficient in terms of space, but it'll be more efficient in terms of processing, which you kind of care more about processing most of the time. Digital Foundry found that the latency disparity is so bad that the 4,800 chip could not outperform any of its Zen 2 counterparts with the testing, including in Call of Duty, Cyberpunk, Crisis Remastered, Ashes Singularity, Metro Exodus, CSGO, Far Cry, Hitman, and Microsoft Lightsim. There's also a few synthetic benchmarks, including memory testing. 
So basically, just by having the two core advantage over the 3,600, the respectable four gigabytes clock speed and eight core console chip could not outperform the 3,600 or 4750 in most games tested. The closest it could come was matching the performance of the 4750, which was less L3 cache than the 3,600, but it was a best case scenario and it couldn't do it all the time. Very intriguing to kind of see this because Digital Foundry is usually pretty on top of all this information. So it does kind of go and show that the actual Xbox chip actually may not be as good as all expected in comparison to the same thing. Thing. It's kind of like, let's say you have the same GPU for the PC and Xbox. It does make sense because the Xbox may have to go prioritize different things such as the operating system or as well the integrated graphics or also costs or optimization. So I am giving for Xbox a bit of a free pass, but I thought the, all the information was very intriguing to go and share with you guys. So not Xbox hate video, but I want to hear your thoughts and comments down below. Make sure you guys are subscribed with the notifications on. We have the Twitter and Twitch stream down below too as well in case you guys would like. And of course, I appreciate y'all so much for watching here in the first place.